Life is a journey made up of experiences. Some are good, some bad, some happy, some sad. We may all be different, but we are connected to the fact that no matter who we are, our stories all have hills and valleys. So tonight we dedicate this episode to those who feel like they have fallen and then they find favor through faith. Welcome to SimSoul Sessions. Everybody and welcome to the show. This week in our safe space, it's one of Jamaica's sweethearts, recording artist, digital rising stars judge and broadcaster Elaine Lawton, whose last name really we don't need to use because she has single name recognition. You can join in tonight's conversation by using the hashtag SimSoulSessions. Now through the highs and lows of her life, the constant companion has been her solid and unwavering faith. And tonight we talk to her about all of that and more. Elaine, welcome to my safe space. Thank you it's for good to having have you here. me. You nervous? What? Yeah, don't need to be. My heart beat so. Ba ba Well, it must what beat. Ba ba Let ba it, <laughs> it beat. Good to have you here. Thank um, you. We're just going to talk some things. Okay. You know how the story goes. Yes. Um, I'm particularly happy to have you here because I follow you in social, as you know. Yes. And I'm always liking your posts, which are so inspirational and so touching. Thank you. And I've just been watching in these last few weeks, and I've just been wondering if you're okay. Just I tell am. us that you're okay. I am okay. I am well, and it is, it's very important for me to, to be honest about that. Yes. Yeah. And that's what I love about you is that, you know, usually we paint this veneer of everything's good all the time. I know God is good all the time, all but the time. pretty much everything else is not. <laughs> um, so let's, let's jump into it a little bit. Um, we're going to go back to growing up in the house with the Seventh-day Adventist mom and the Baptist dad. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And you around somewhere at 13 deciding that Seventh-day was the road you were going to trot. Yes, yes. Actually, what happened was New Year's Eve. I was, you know, I went to sleep. I, and before I went to sleep, I said a prayer. And I said, Lord, you know, I really want to be in church. Um, and the way how God does things mm. is he just answers you. It's how he does it. Like, and sometimes it's directly and sometimes it's indirectly. But I got a call from my friend, uh, Camila, inviting me to church. And, you know, I said, oh, mommy, Camila invited me to church. So I said, so she said, but you don't have nothing to wear. She said, because you can't wear pants to my church. You have so to wear a day, skirt. Right. Exactly. So then mommy said, all right, we have to get something for you to wear. And that started, you know, me going to church and joining the choir and all of that. Yeah. yeah. So if, if going to church in pants was a big worry, mm. then certainly the Elaine who was performing. <laughs> <laughs> you're, going hey! to do, you're, going to, you're going to do what? You're going to sing what kind of music? Yes. Where? Yes. How, what kind of journey was that for you? Because that's what you felt like you were called to do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've always been a performer. I've always been someone who's creative and wants to make a lot of noise. My parents have always encouraged that. Uh, my, I remember my, <laughs> my father's mom, mom's, uh, whenever I'd get home, I'd be like, Grandma, she said, my God, the house was so quiet. <laughs> and then you came home and they just made this bug and I said, yeah. And, you know, I was always encouraged to be uh, me, mm -hmm. you know, because that is who I am, mm -hmm. effervescent and loud. So, um, you know, I, I, I first, before I decided to become a singer, uh, well, to pursue my singing career, I was in banking mm -hmm. um, in New York. Mm -hmm. After I left you, I went to banking. Then came home and said, all right, well, while I was doing the banking, I was moonlighting as a songwriter. I wanted to write songs. I wanted to, to be involved in music. I couldn't wait till the end of the day to do music, you know. So I didn't sleep for like four years straight. I'd work from 7 to 3, 30 at the bank, and then I'd be in any studio I could get into from like 6 to how much o'clock in the morning, sleep for maybe if I slept, it would be like half an hour, and then I was back at the bank. Mm. Uh, so I was really driven to do this. Um, then in about 2004, I believe, I got promoted to assistant vice president. I couldn't do that anymore. I'd no. have to start representing the bank. Mm -hmm. So I decided to quit and come home to sing. Mm -hmm. And so I did. 
and I was very um, blessed to meet up with Daseka and, and start recording with different producers. But and while you were working, while you were pursuing that dream of singing, see that picture there? Prior meeting call over you it's because yeah, you belly. were... Our belly look good. Yeah. It, not, it don't look so no more, Simone. She's, she's a good hers. Oh, gosh. Um, Glory yeah, to God. You ended up in, yeah, you ended up the subject of, because you were going to hell, weren't you? Yeah, there was there was a conversation about that, but you know I don't I don't like to give light to those types of things. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know I know who I am. I know who I so am. So how did you reconcile that? Um, fast forward to when you got baptized again, mm -hmm. two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I asked you, you're in a place where you've made this decision. You're still making music. And for some, you're you're not secular enough. Yeah. And then for the church, you're not religious enough. enough. So how was, what was that like trying to wedge yourself into that space? Look here, no, Simone. I don't got a wedge. <laughs> I just got to be me. And if you like me, you like me. And if you don't like me, God bless you and go with you and carry you. We are me now, go. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Because I have to be myself, you know. I've, I've even launched into, a, like you said, when you introduced me as broadcaster a while ago. I said, oh my gosh, I'm a broadcaster and this is all God, you mm -hmm. know? And it's not me trying to wedge myself into anything. It's just being exactly who I am, you know, and, and falling into whatever, wherever he has me to go, yeah. you know? Yeah, we spoke about you coming off a tour mm -hmm. mm. and you said you, you came home off the tour and you were standing in the airport and you were so, the word you said was empty. Yeah, yeah. You've been going through a period where you just felt empty. Yes. You're doing all these things, but you still feel empty. Yes. Sad. Yeah. Prolonged period of sadness, you said to me. Not a regular sadness, like depressed sadness. Mm -hmm. What was that about? And that's the thing. Like, there are, so many, there are so many goals that I've set in my life. I'm blessed and I recognize that I am blessed. That doesn't stop me from, from being discouraged or sometimes failing or making mistakes. And I'm the kind of person that constantly... Uh, Self-condemnation was something that was something I was great at. Yeah. You know, I'd remember all the mistakes I made. I'd remember all the missteps. And I'd say, but how could you do something like that? You know better than that. Or why didn't I, why didn't I do that? Or, you know, and, and so those things will, will, will seep away. At, at your, you make your joy dissipate. They will just tear you down. And then it becomes... Oh, yeah, this is who you are, you know. So I was at that place now, whereas constantly, even though you have the accolades and you have the people cheering and you have, you know, uh, blessings uh, in abundance, if your self-talk isn't positive, if your self-talk uh, does not represent what God says about you, then it can drain you, yeah. you know, and that's where I was. And when I was saying it to you, I was like, as in the, as in the, um, what do you want to call it when you reach the hall, yeah. customs hall, where you have to stand up long mm -hmm. and wait for your bag. Mm -hmm. And a lady, a, a young lady walked over to me and she just said to me, God says to say that he loves you. Oh, okay. What does lady know about mm -hmm. me? And I didn't know. She says, I know you're going through a lot, but he loves you. And water full up my eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Let's not talk about water and yeah, I forgot. Ooh, Two criers a, right oh, here. Yeah. Look here. Um, you got to a point in your life where you wrote a hit song for a young lady named Samantha J. Yes. I want to talk to you about that on the other side because one of the things people are asking you is why you never take that song for yourself. I'm going to talk about that when we come back with Elaine. More on how she quieted the chaos and the confusion in her life when we come back. Just catching up with Elaine while we were in break. This is a, let me tell you something. Self-condemnation is not a, it's not an easy thing. Um, when you wrote this song for Samantha J, mm. um, you said people were calling to say, why didn't you take, because that song was such a big hit, why never take it for yourself, right? Yes, the song. Sorry. Yes, <laughs> right. But there is a notion, Elaine, of people telling you you weren't, you weren't raunchy enough, you had to be more sexy, you had to, that you just weren't willing to. Abide. No, because people are buckling me. <laughs> <You can't. laughs> Yeah. Because I'm not that, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not that. And like you said, they asked, why didn't you sing Tight Up Skirt? First of all, nobody believed that I wrote that song. 
which I did. Same way like how me and Taurus wrote, yeah, Riley wrote, the Miliko one mm -hmm. drop, exactly. And they said to me, um, why you, didn't you sing it? I said, first of all, nobody would believe I was the girl in the tight up skirt. Mm -hmm. No, I, they, they said, no, you're not. You're the girl in the pants. <laughs> you know what I mean? And seriously, you're the woman in the pants. You know, like, what, what, what are you can't saying? Trick us. Yeah, you can't uh. trick me. So, but, but that doesn't stop me from being creative mm -hmm. and being uh, very aware of that's who Samantha was, you know? And so it, it made sense and it worked for her. Yeah. Yeah. So um, when you, when you, the catalyst I asked you for when you got baptized, mm -hmm. you got sick. Yeah. It was, just a, it was a, an ear infection. Yes. But it was a, obviously it was a bigger deal because it, it forced you to a place. Yes, Talk absolutely. Talk to me about that time in your life. Yes, yeah, so it was eustachian tube dysfunction. And, and the eustachian tube basically controls uh, balance. Ah, oh, Lord, you are good. Mm -hmm. And so it was, it, it was indicative, of course, of a sinus situation where my nose just keep on draining and draining. And after a while, the eustachian tube just couldn't keep up with it. And so I felt dizzy. Mm -hmm. If anybody has ever felt, what, right, in vertigo? Mm -hmm. It don't feel good. And you're not moving and you feel like you're Dropping moving. Over. Yeah, man, and the nausea. And, you know, going to the doctor and doing all type of tests and going into, into the... Um, the, the thing and them looking the at your brain right, yeah. to see if yeah. everything all right with your brain. I say, Daddy, Daddy, me no know what to me. me not, not, him say nothing no wrong with your brain. That's <laughs> not them looking there <laughs> because my father <laughs> is serenity yeah. personified. Yeah. You know, and, and he's always been, you know, just such a, a calming spirit and presence in my life. Mm -hmm. um, God bless him. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, we went through that and, and not knowing what it was and then finding out it was this eustachian tube dysfunction and then, you know, we set about dealing with it uh, physically. But then, because I know everything is spiritual first, I said, what does this mean? My life is out of balance. What is this representing? What do I need to do in order to contribute to standing on solid ground, you know, to be on a firm foundation? And, you know, I've always been searching the scripture. If you know anything about me, you know, say, I love Bible and I love pen. <laughs> Any man out there who is single who's <laughs> going to be my husband, that's all you got to buy me. Bible and pen. Anyway, I digress. Yeah, so, quite. I was searching the scriptures <laughs> because I said, okay, where's my peace? Where's my peace? Where's my balance? And, and, and so, you know, I said, you know, Lord, I, I need an answer. And it, and it led me to wanting a, a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ, who is my Lord and Savior. And... Um, it was all about baptism. I said, but me not, me not going to church when I really like to that. And then my beautiful sister queen, Camille Davis, uh, called me one day and invited me to church. And it wasn't even that we were friends mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. You know, we just actually buck, bucked up at an award show. We arrived at the same time. And so we ended up taking pictures together. We started dancing together, like, uh, you know, with, with everybody and then we're laughing. I know her. She's hilarious, beautiful, uh, saved woman of God. And she said, she just said, hey, Alain, you know, uh, direct message, we're talking. And then she says, come to church, no? So I said, oh, yeah, that's Ryan Mark's church, pure in heart. But Ryan Mark is not a preacher. Ryan Mark an artist. Him can yeah. preach. And I said, anyway, I'm going to go. And I went. And uh, Pastor Ryan Mark is a brilliant speaker who just uh, exudes the unconditional accepting love of God. And I remember I was there. And I said, oh, no, this is where I need to be. Mm -hmm. So, so all of that prolonged period of darkness and despair that we spoke about, mm. um, you said you kept hearing, remember who you are. Ah, oh, yes. Remember who you are and whose you are. And, for, for, and it's easy to forget. It's easy to be caught up in who people say you are or be caught up in what you did or to be caught up in what you, not haven't done. what you haven't done, what you've missed, what you think you've missed out at, you know, what you feel like you've, you've you know, okay, I've fallen short of it, so I'll never get there, you know, and that's a lie, mm -hmm. you know. And, and so all of this was uh, God saying, I remember you. Do you remember you? You know, I've never forgotten you. I've always been close to you. And then through a series of events, as God does mm -hmm. very intentionally, you know, I was invited to church and uh, one Wednesday night, I remember sitting in the service and I felt the spirit of the Lord imparting my soul. I'm ready for you to be baptized. And I said, OK, Jesus, so am I. And uh, Wayne Marshall was sitting mm -hmm. beside me the night mm -hmm. he was in church the night. And uh, I said to him, hey, Wayne. I got to ask Ryan for baptize me, you know, Pastor Ryan. Because I know Pastor Ryan as Ryan, mm -hmm. as a fellow artist. And then he said, you know, baptized already. And I said, 
mm -mm. And he said, oh, okay. And I remember Wayne came into the room with me. And you know, when I told uh, Pastor Ryan what I, that I bought, wanted baptism, he said, oh, really? Okay. Great. And hell you know, sure it was. Hell sure. Into the into morning. Into your alabaster box. Look, ah. so, we're not telling the story. Uh, uh, you can if you want. So me Bali Bali, right, Simon? <laughs> Just like a yo, yo And my mother too is where I got the bowlingness from. So after I, you know, accepted, do you uh, baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, of boom, dip. Thank you, Jesus. You are worthy. You waited on me, Father God. You are worthy. I am so grateful. I feel like, oh, yes, this is the beginning of something amazing. Me look on the, uh, on the, on this um, shore now. I see my father. I see my mother. I see some of my friends who mean the world to me. Mm -hmm. I rush to my mother and me and her just, you know, interlock in this love-filled embrace. She knows everything about me. I hide nothing from my parents. And she ball at me, ball. And then I just felt another set of hands reach around me and mommy. And, they, and then I looked and I saw a lady in a red and white polka dot <laughs> bikini. Oh, come on with the, with the truth that God love. And the belly it's over the bikini. <laughs> Come on now. Start to and sing. And the ladies, oh, come on. You don't know the cost of the oil in my alabaster box. And so I bust out a laughing because mm. the ball did have to put palm pause. But the message was clear. The message was clear. The message was clear. Yeah. It matters what you know about your life and what you are bringing to Christ. It doesn't matter what anybody else thinks and also... God was saying to me, stop the balling. Mm -hmm. It's time for you rejoice. to smile now. It's yeah. time for you to rejoice. Because yeah. he's there with us in our crying yeah. and in our rejoicing. Amen, sister. Yeah. Yes. Well, yeah. I can testify to both. Oh. Um, so you looked on the show and you saw mommy and you saw daddy and all your friends who you love so much. Yes. But let's show them to you again now. What do you mean? Ronald Lorzy Boozy. You're the sister that I didn't even know I needed but I'm so thankful that God blessed me with since I was a very little girl you know how much I love you and have always been so happy and grateful to have you in my life and I've always said that you have a gift of speaking life into people and I'm so glad that people get to experience that every day on your various platforms I love and miss you so 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 much it's your love and support that keeps me warm and keeps me going. I'm so incredibly proud to see what you're always doing, inspiring me and I'm sure all the other youths of Jamaica with your wise words and messages. You are kind, you are generous, your heart is one of gold and I appreciate how much God has been blessing you and he will continue to shine his light through you, my sister. You are one of the most talented people I know. You are a bright light. You, I've been able to bear witness you sharing your God's given gift to millions and have adults drop at your feet and scream and praise you and bawl because you give so effortlessly and you give so much of yourself, not just for your fans through your music, but for your loved ones as well. We are far away at travel from my friend, from we literally giant universal singers together. 20, we didn't even tell the people how long ago. And then you went here separately and did your thing and became this big deal. But somehow we still manage to remain friends and still keep the link there. She's one of them people where you call and you say, me just give her a quick heal and quick heal turn out around 32 minutes. Easy. You cannot be in her presence and you know, feel like you have a deadly laugh every day. So make sure you say your abs them good because you have a laugh. You know, when I think about you, there is one word that comes to mind and that is purpose. You have a God-given purpose to touch and impact lives in a way that empowers and protects. You have been a loyal and loving sister friend, and you have a gift. And many people would think that I'm talking about your amazing voice. I am actually talking about your heart. I'm so proud of you, so happy for the journey that you have been on. Thank you for being such an inspiration to me over all these years that we have known each other for the sisterhood, the friendship, the love, the music, everything. 
Dr. Soalene is this enlightened being who was sent down here to us to change our lives. When Alene walks into a room, energy shifts immediately. And um, when we get together as a family, it is just amazing. It's something that you have to experience. When we get together and she brings this light with her, we sing, the, the, the place becomes a stage. So of course we sing and we dance and we love and we hug and we eat and we, it is just an awesome feeling. I'm honored to be able to speak about how special you are because you are indeed very special to me. It's been many, many years of on way about friendship and support and I just want to publicly thank you for always being there for me um, no matter what and I just want to I, well, I hope that I've been able to add a little something special to your journey because you have added so much to mine thank God I had you you are the most precious gift that a mother could receive God gave me to you for a special reason. You are my inspiration. Whatever you do, Alain, it is so special that the love I have for you, I can't, it's, it's beyond infinity. And let me tell you something, Lainey. I know that God has something special for you because you are actually doing it now. You are inspiring so many young people. And I hope to God that every day, according to your auntie, you will crescendo more than anything else. Love you, girl. Continue to be an inspiration. Bye. I just want to let you know how much I love you, love what you're doing, love who you are. And may God bless you and keep you. I am so happy that God placed you in my life. Continue being the amazing person that you are. And according to this song, by the way, she said, if you love me like I love you, what a world. Alien, big up yourself. I love you, darling. Thank God that I am your mother. And I wish that every mother could have a daughter like you. Love flows like a river. If we, if we. Together. It's a gather. A gather. You saw a little. What do you think? <laughs> oh, you and your mother are so adorable. <laughs> I gotta tell you. All right. Yes. Collect yourself. No, I'm trying yourself. not to. Yes. Sorry. I'm Thank not, you for that. Not sorry. I uh, know. You're so awesome. Thank you. You are welcome. You deserve. We'll be right back, guys. So come. Oh. <laughs> All right, we're back, um, everybody. Time for us to wrap up tonight's show. Um, Elaine, I'm giving you the last word. When we spoke, you tended to end your sentences with, it is well. Yes. Um, for many people watching who've been at that place of despair, prolonged despair, can I find a light? And I don't ever feel that it will be. What is there for them to believe that it will be? Oh, that's a big one, Sim. Um, it is well. Uh, that story is, uh, comes from a Bible story uh, about the Shunammite woman. The Shunammite woman is a woman who made room for the man of God in her home. She built a room for the man of God uh, to come in when he visited the town he, she said to her husband let's build a room for him and she invited him into her house and he lived there when he was in town and then he sent his his um his assistant to ask her ask her what she wants because she's been so kind to us you know let me petition you know god soon for her she said i don't want a thing may i write so then the the um uh, the the servant of the man of god said oh but she doesn't have any children so the man of God called her to the room and said, this time next year, you're going to have children. She said, no, don't let me hope. Don't let me hope and then make my hopes blow up in smoke like they have blown up in smoke so many times before. 
And he said, next year, this time, you will have your son. Boom, she have our picnic. And 12 years later, I believe, the son dies. The father sends, tells her, you know, the father of the son says, you know, your son is dead. She said, it is well. Saddle up my donkey. I'm going to the man of God. And she rode the donkey to the man of God. And all the way, he sent his servant to her and said, I didn't, God never told me she was coming, you know. What, what's she doing here? Go to her, ask her what's wrong. She saw the servant of the man of God. She said, it is well. She went to him and said, look, you told me, you gave me this son, my hope. And you said I would hold him. And you are going to come and deal with this because you made me a promise. And the man of God went and the son was resurrected. It is well, there is power in declaring it is well when situations seem hopeless and despair surrounds you and when you feel like you can't make it, you declare, use the power of your word which does not return to you void but which God has given us the authority to use to lift you from the pits of despair. There is resurrection of dreams when you make room in your life for God. And that is what that woman did. And when the darkness came, she declared it is well in the face of the darkness and went and placed her son in the room that she had made for the man of God. So everyone who feels despair now, everyone who feels a loss of hope, place that thing that you think is dead in the room that you create for your God, in that place of your worship, in that place of your prayer, and believe and know without a doubt that resurrection is coming and that it is well. All right. Thank you for coming to Elaine's church. That was a serve man. Um, thank you for that, lady, and for sharing your story. And we know it is well Amen. with you. It thank you well. so much thank you. for being here. We're going to close out as we always do with our affirmation. So here we go. Oh boy, life is so peculiar sometimes, eh? We, we want it all and when we get it, we realize it's not enough. We build lives filled with lots of things that add up to emptiness. Like, how does that math even work? Well, T.D. Jakes once said that real value isn't in what you own, or wear, or drive, or where you live. The greater value, he says, is found in love and life, health and strength, friends and family, and I would add here, in faith. Instant gratification is often coupled with long-term unhappiness. And what you think will liberate you is often the most burdensome thing in your life. And to free your mind, you'll have to free yourself from it, from the baggage, the pressure, and yes, the pain. Unplug from what is draining you and plug into your source hey. of joy, of happiness, of peace. Then you are choosing to access the positive energy to live a more fulfilled and fulfilling life. So tonight we are affirming, I trust, I know, and I will live to tell. I know in time it will be well Hallelujah. that is our soul food for tonight thank you for watching tonight's show please check youtube at simone clark cooper to catch up on episodes that you might have missed and tonight i'm inviting you guys to check wherever you get your podcasts for the new same soul sessions podcast it is well with that too hey. and you can access it right now on the platforms that you um get your podcasts on just search for it talk and let us know. We will be back next week with another story of the power of the human spirit. Until then, guys, every blessing. And please remember to count your blessings. Elaine has told us it is well. Good night, everybody.